Hello people, let's dive right in. So first off, let's add a new 3D node. Uh, let's rename this node uh, Respawner. So Respawner, let's save it as a scene and save it in the objects folder. It will be a new object. Then let's open the scene. Um, in order for a Respawner to work, let's think what we need. So we need to tell the Respawner what we want to respawn. And we need to tell the respawner when to respawn it. So in order to do this, let's first add a timer just like that. And then let's add a script to our respawner. Create a new script. We can remove everything that's in there. So in order to tell our respawner what we want to respawn, let's create a new variable that we will export in the inspector. The variable will be enemy. And it will be a variable of type packed scene. Don't forget, adding the two dots there is saying that the type is a packed scene. We don't want to set it to equal. We want it to set the type of the variable. And then in the inspector, we can go and select what is the packed scene that we want to respawn. So in our case, we can go in our objects folder and just slide the enemy because we want to respawn our enemy. Just like that. Uh, I'll just move my respond.gd in my scripts like that. Good. And then let's select our timer and go in the signals to select the timeout signal and connect the timeout signal to the responder. So now when the timer will uh, timeout, we will execute certain commands. So the first thing we want to do is create a new variable that we will call instance. And the instance will be equal to enemy dot instantiate. So basically, when we want to add a new node to a node tree in Godot, we need to add an instance of a packed scene. So we cannot add directly the packed scene. We have to instantiate it at first. So this is instantiating the enemy. And then we can simply add child and the child that we want to add is the instance just like that then let's select our timer go in inspector uh, let's set the timer to one shot and to auto start so the timer will only run once and it will start when the scene gets loaded we can test it to see what it does and now the goblin spawns on me we can go in the world scene and take the respawner and just move it away a bit like that. Uh, you can remove the enemy goblin if you still have it in the scene, you can remove it. It will work perfectly fine. Now, if we test it, as you can see, the goblin is spawning right there. Uh, there's a little problem with our goblin right now with the movements of the goblin. We can go and fix it by opening the enemy uh, script. In the physics process function, as you can see, uh, the falling script is, is perfectly fine, but the problem is right there. When the goblin is idle, we are setting velocity to be equal to vector 3.0, but we don't want that. We want the movements on the X and the Z axis to be zero, but not on the Y axis, because we still want the goblin to be able to fall even though He's in the idle state. In order to do this, just remove the zero and let's say vector three, a velocity will be equal to a vector three that the X value will be equal to zero, that the Y value will be equal to velocity dot Y. So equal to itself, so it won't change. And then the Z axis will be equal to zero also. And now if we test it, the goblin should be falling. And as you can see, he fell on the floor. He might be a bit slow when he falls, so let's just remove the dot, and 98 will be our new gravity. So he will fall much, much faster. Right now, when we kill the goblin, he's not respawning. And obviously, we want him to respawn as soon as he dies. So in order to do this, let's call the process function. Let's get child count of the respawner node. So if the respawner node has less or equal to one child. So in this case, for example, 
the respawner node has one shell because it's the timer. So it would execute this line. Then what we're going to do is start the timer. So let's bring timer, so timer dot start, and this will start the timer. So now each time that the respawner has only one child or less, we will start the timer. And when the timer times out, we add a new enemy. We can remove, we can uncheck auto start now because this will auto start, but there's still one more thing we need to do is make sure that the timer is not already running when we execute this line, because otherwise we will run it indefinitely and the timer will never end because each step we will check is there one child or less. And we'll say, yes, there's only one child. So let's start the timer and the next step We'll check it again and restart the timer, restart the timer. So the timer will never be able to end and will never be able to add a new child. In this case, our instance that is our enemy. So in order to fix that, let's check if the child count is lower or equal to one. And also if the timer has started. So timer started equal equal to false. Let's create a new variable that is called timer started. And let's set it to false that false at first. Good, just like that. And then when the timer starts, we can set the variable to be equal to true. And once the timer times out, so ends, let's say that it's equal to false again. And now we should be able to see the goblin spawn. Then we should be able to kill the goblin and a new goblin should respawn just like that. So now we have a fully functional uh, respawner for our enemy. So we now have a pretty good foundation for a simple RPG. Uh, if you have any specific demands, I highly encourage you to ask me in the comment section because uh, we are getting closer to the end of this series, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to add a scene change like scene transitions and also a shop but other than that i don't know if i'll add any more stuff so if you have any demands just tell me in the comment section and i'll surely make a video on it thank you like subscribe and see you in the next one goodbye